Coming up next on Impact Showdown Radio tonight, we have a very special guest that's going to be joining us. It is none other than former TNA Gut Check contestant, Alaya Markopoulos. You guys are going to be in for a treat. And, of course, we're going to be covering the very latest installment from tonight's episode of Impact Wrestling, as it was the championship Thursday edition, where RVD had to defend his X Division title. We'll let you know about that and everything else TNA wrestling-related news. It's Impact Showdown Radio. And, folks, it begins right now. Live from the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., you're listening to Impact Showdown with your host, Lee Sanders. Guys, this is the Black Avenger, Lee Sanders. Thank you guys so much for checking out tonight's episode of Impact Showdown Radio. Coming at you live right now on November 29th, 2012. Just one minute past the 10 o'clock hour. We're going into a little bit of overtime right now looking at Impact Wrestling. Uh, as we just saw the conclusion of the RVD versus Austin Aries match. Looks like it's ending with a bit of controversy. We're not going to be covering the Impact Wrestling results just yet, though, because we've got a very special guest that we're going to be bringing on to the show. We had a little bit of technical difficulties uh, getting ready for the show. I was originally supposed to talk with Aliyah in the screening room, uh, get some last-minute notations from him, uh, anything he wanted me to mention uh, to his fans uh, as we were getting ready to come on the air. Um, so we're going to take a brief commercial break, see if we can get them on the air. In the meantime, we'll let you guys know what ended up happening here with the final few seconds of Impact Wrestling. Uh, we are watching Hawk Hogan just glaring down Austin Aries. As remember, Aries is the one that had stirred that whole big old pot of what he started last week, revealing that Brooke Hogan was in some type of a relationship with Bully Ray. Now we see eyes are locked on with Bully Ray, actually. Hogan, Bully Ray, not really pleased with what is happening right here, realizing that his baby daughter, Brooke, is having some type of romantic relationship with Bully Ray. I know, really scary thought when you think about it. All right, the one and the only, Elia. Markopolis that's going to be coming on to the show in just a few seconds. For those of you that wish to interact with us during the course of tonight's episode, you can do so right now. We've got the chat room open up, loaded up right now. Hit us up. It's at blogtalkradio.com slash drcwr show. You can also interact with us on Twitter. Hit us up at Infinity One Prod. And you can also hit us up on Facebook at Infinity One Productions. While you're at it, take the time out. Like the page. Really. Like the page. You'll dig it. You'll love it. All right, so let me set this up, bring in our special guest. Uh, for those of you, y'all might not remember this guy, especially by the name that I'm announcing him by. Y'all might have known him better under the ring name of Evan Markopoulos, and he had popped up on the episode of TNA Wrestling Open Fight Night Edition back on September 20th, where he was given the opportunity to participate in the TNA Gut Check Tryout, and he had a match against Douglas Williams, and he had an impressive outing, I thought, as well as a few other uh, wrestling fans thought, those of you in the wrestling community, and unfortunately, the TNA Gut Check judges, they... Didn't really see what we were seeing, and they pretty much said, ah, you know, sorry, you can't get a contract. And, you know, a lot of us, including myself, you know, we were kicking back and we saw this, and we really thought this kid had what it took to be in TNA Wrestling, that he had everything that TNA Wrestling was looking for, not to mention a very solid investment, I felt, long-term investment. But TNA judges didn't really go that route, not sure what's up with that, but we're definitely going to ask him about that and find out what all he's been up to since last we had saw him on that episode. Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring on live on the air right now, Elia Markopoulos. Elia, how you doing tonight, bro? And how's it going? 
Hey, pretty good. So thank sorry. Thank you for having me, so, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. I am like a bat out of hell when it comes to time management. I know I was supposed to be talking to me you. Me too, man. Me yeah, too, like, man. Like 15, My clock runs slower minutes. than other people's, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, we were supposed to be talking like 15, 20 minutes before we got on the air, so I wanted to make sure, you know, you were on point. I emailed I was on you. Point. I emailed you saying I haven't heard from you yet, but then yeah, I, got, I, got, yeah. I started listening and I heard you were going to call, and then boom, you called. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad we can just jump right into it. <laughs> So, you know, doing it live. That's what a good friend of mine would say. Yeah, yeah. It's a high honor to have you on the show. I mean, uh, like I said, you know, we're a fan of yours. I, I saw your work back in September, and I was like, wow, you know, this guy is awesome. And I'm kicking back. Uh, it was over the Thanksgiving holiday, as a matter of fact, right around then. And I was like, man, whatever happened to? And I started, you know, trying to find you in a Google search. And my friend, you are just one hard cookie to find because – there's only but so much information on you that's out there uh, in the Internet. And luckily I was able to stumble upon your Facebook page. And I know you had, uh, yeah. you know, you and me were talking for a little bit and everything. And uh, I'd like for you to just kick things off, especially those that might be listening to you for the very first time. I'd like for you, if you will, to let the fans know a bit about yourself. I did a little bit of homework on you, but I'd like for you to let the listeners know a little bit about yourself. I mean, you got a really impressive resume, if I do say so myself. I mean, you're 18 years old, and correct me if I'm wrong, you began wrestling uh, in 2007? 2007, 13 years old. 13 years old. I mean, that is just something that is unprecedented, something that is not really, you know, heard of. I'm I'm very curious. How did your family take that when you told them at the age of 13, you know, hey, mom, dad, I, I want to be a wrestler? You know, I know usually we have those that sit up and say, first and foremost, they were a fan of the sport. Yeah. And they talk about, you know, what led them into deciding they wanted to be a wrestler. You know, it was a career path they wanted to go no matter what. What what was that pivotal moment for you that say, you know what, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? Yeah, I, uh, you know, like everybody, I grew up watching wrestling, but I grew up watching wrestling at a different time than guys that I wrestle with now, you know, guys who are on TV now, you know, they grew up watching uh, guys like the Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, but I didn't, I grew up watching Hollywood Hulk Hogan, you know what I mean? And, um, but, and that's when wrestling for me, I mean, and, and the Attitude Era, growing up watching the Attitude Era, that is, is seeing guys like larger than life, Chris Jericho, Stone Cold, uh, The Undertaker, Kane, those guys, that that was when wrestling, you know, was at its biggest. And I grew up watching wrestling at that point, and I knew probably at, I forget re- what WrestleMania it was, when Jeff Hardy got speared off of the, uh, the, the uh, ladder. Remember when he's hanging from the belt? That's when I knew I wanted to be a wrestler. And, uh, but, I mean, I grew up, like I said, watching, you know, when WrestleMania started selling out in stadiums and when wrestling got huge. And it's funny because I was 12 years old and I said to myself, I want to be a wrestler. And then within the next year, I, uh, John Cena did a show with Chaotic Wrestling up here. And Chaotic Wrestling had a school, the Chaotic Training Center, and was partnered with Killer Kowalski's. And, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I had... I knew who Killer Kowalski was by name, but, you know, I didn't grow up watching him. You know, I didn't have any clue who he really was in the ring. But, you know, as I uh, I found the name, I watched him and stuff. But, like, I always remember seeing Killer Kowalski at the beginning of the WrestleMania clip, you know what I mean, when he's sitting in the, the old arena. That's how I remember seeing him when I was younger. But So I signed up to the school, and, um, yeah, like, would you ask the parents? My parents, my parents were, uh, they were really for it. You know, they, they knew. I think just having Kowalski's name on the school, they knew that it, it was it would have a good return in the end. You know what I mean? Right, right. Because cause that's such a valuable name. It's not like it was, uh, you know, Joe Schmo who was Killer Kowalski's school. And, and, you know, that name for my parents, they grew up watching Killer Kowalski. So they were like, you know what, if you want to do it, you know, there's a school that you can do it. We'll pay for you to do it. And they're actually, you know, they've always been by my side. My dad went to the first gut check. I flew down on a Thursday you know, morning, left the next, you know, Friday morning. The first time I went, my dad bought tickets, you know, because I got my tickets within the, like, a week before I had to go. It was, like, September 17th, actually, I got my tickets, and my dad bought the tickets those night, that night, and uh, he came down with me, you know. 
he right. was hanging out with all the guys backstage and stuff, talking to them. And I was like, Dad, can you kind of relax a little bit? <laughs> I mean, he's, you know, he's being professional talking to them. Not really about wrestling, like family stuff, you know, like weird yeah. stuff. <laughs> that, that's that got to be huge. I, I mean, now, your parents, I, I'm just curious. I just want to make sure because I know we have some younger uh, listeners that check out the show. And yeah. I know they're hearing this story, and they're probably like, yes, yes, that's me. That should be me. I just want you to make sure you set the tone for them. Now, as far as your academics go, you know, did your parents kind of sit up and say to you, hey, okay, hey, look, we are all for this. If you want to go down this route of being a professional wrestler, nothing wrong with that. As long as you continue to you know, have your education, you, you never know how things might end up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, have yeah, something yeah. To fall that, back on. And that's how it was. Up until I'd say now, because the way I see it is, uh, I mean, we'll get into it, I guess, after, because what happened is after the gut check is they offered me to go to Kentucky for free, so now when I do that, it's kind of like, well, they want me to go to college no matter what, but it's like if I go to Kentucky for a few months and they want to put me on TV, well, I'm definitely going to do that. So, you know, I it's like going through high school and wrestling, it mm-hmm. was more like, okay, you got to, you know, get into a college but you can wrestle, and now it's just like, to me, it's like, well, I just want to make money wrestling, so it's like I'm getting in the opportunity to, so, mm-hmm. you know, I, I'm getting the ball, and I don't want to drop it, you know? I definitely want to pick your brain more on that, because I, I, yeah, I know you tease it right there. I definitely want to pick your brain a little bit more in later part of the show. You know, you were talking about who had trained you, and yep. I, I'm very curious, you know, at the age that you had began your training, did mm-hmm. you come across any resistance from anyone who maybe didn't want to train you, whether it be because of your age or maybe they kind of went with the first impression, you know, I don't think this young man is really serious. Did you yeah. see that resistance early on? Well, you know, it's at the time I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the first like year I was just wrestling with two, two or three other really, they were really big men, you know, they were like, Six five, three hundred fifty pounds. And they would just throw me around, and because um, the school, the school was kind of slow back then. You know, it was the beginning of the recession, oh mm-hmm. seven. You know, it was around that time. You know, mm-hmm. and they were uh, so the school was real slow that year. So we only had four of us, and you know, three of them were combined weight over a thousand pounds. So they used to throw me around, and I didn't know it at the time. But I guess you know my trainers were real, were real worried about that. You know, they never really said anything. Mm-hmm. And I kind of like thanked them for that because I feel like if they had said something, my parents would have they might have freaked, you know. So, right, right, right. but like hearing from them now, they were kind of like they were always worried about it. But you know, they knew I was safe. I was safe with them. So, and my trainers, you know, they trainers are awesome. They always helped me out a lot. Right, right. So now I know eventually you did make your way to quite a few promotions before leading up to TNA wrestling. Mm-hmm. I know off the break, uh, one milestone that kind of stands out in my mind is that you were the chaotic uh, New England champion two times. No, I well, once I won it mm-hmm. when I was, uh, man, I think I was 15. And then about a year ago, I proclaimed myself champion for a few months. <laughs> ah! Yeah, that's what it is. So it comes up on, you know, it comes up on some websites as I want it, but I proclaim myself a champion. Okay. Well, yeah. still, hey, you know, even if it's not two times, one time is still good, you know. That's not really something, you know, too many people, you know, close to your age can, can say, you know. Like, hey, I was yeah. a champion, you know. What, what were you, you know? It's kind of like, well, uh, you know, I... I got bees on my report card this semester. <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that doesn't top the, you know, having the championship belt, you know. Um, so tell, tell, the, tell the listeners what uh, promotions uh, you've wrestled for so far. Uh, well, Chaotic Wrestling, uh, New England Championship Wrestling, Millennium Wrestling Federation, Top Rope Wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Let's see. NWA uh, Vintage. Yeah, NWA Vintage Pro, NWA on Fire. Um, oh wow, there's got to be a couple more. Uh, I believe there's yeah, there's, there's a couple more little ones, you know, that would just have one show here or there, you know. Mm-hmm. And then of course I did WWE once I got right act. Oh, talk and, about that! So you did WWE? Uh, WWE? Yeah. Oh, talk yeah, about that. It was a two day, uh, a two day tryout thing, and uh, first day was Raw in Hartford at the XL Center. I didn't do anything. It was, people did security that night. Uh, two guys got to wrestle Ryback that night. Uh, Makazi and Scotty Slade, they wrestle as up here. 
And, uh, you know, they're two really excellent. Mikazi moved down to uh, Tampa. His girlfriend is in the WWE now as Sasha Banks. Oh. So, and he got right back to that night. Uh, and then the next day, we had our uh, tryouts in front of William Regal and Bob Armstrong. And um, originally, it was going to be three of us going to get right back. I remember I was coming out of the bathroom and um, one of my trainers, Brian Fury, came up to me and was like, Ilya, let's go. We've got to go out there and try something. And it was me, Brian Fury, and Julian Starr, another wrestler up here. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ryback tried to do his finishing move on all three of us, and he couldn't do it. So um, Arn Anderson told him, all right, well, you know, just choose two of them. And he, at the time, he was talking to Fred Sampson, um, what's his name, Darren Young. Uh-huh. And uh, I know him, you know, so he was like, uh, you know, choose that kid right there. So and I just turned 18, you know, that uh, it was June, so I was turned 18 in April. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh, geez, you know, there I go. And I was going to be on SmackDown. So later that night, you know, Manchester, New Hampshire, Verizon Wireless, and, you know, there were like 10,000 people there probably. So we got to cut a promo on TV. That's, that's you know, a lot of people don't get to be on TNA and WWE in the same year. I got to cut a promo on both promotions, you know, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so, yeah. How does that make you feel to see where Ryback is now, as a lot of people consider him to be one of those main event guys for the WWE? How does that feel to know you kind of had a little something to do with I, that? I knew it, because the way when we went out there and wrestled when we were in the ring with him, the crowd, mm-hmm. it, was, it was like, compared to everybody else, his was like just the loudest chance, just because he's such a, he's a you know, he's like a, he's just a monster when you see him, so it's just like, and, you know, WWE fans haven't seen that since, like, Batista, and that's something that they want to see, you know? Because, mm-hmm. you know, they say, like, oh, you know, Vince always wants those muscular guys, but, you know, when they come out, you know, like, Chris Masters, it, like, turns heads, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's how it's always been, so. And he's one of those guys. He just turns heads. Right back, and correct me if I'm wrong, right back on TV, I mean, he just looks like he is one massive Beast, and I, you know, I always say the TV really doesn't do it justice. I mean, he he looks like he's a pretty big dude. He's the biggest guy I've ever seen in my life, besides the great Kali. Wow. He's literally the biggest guy I've ever seen. He's like, he's like three people wide, but he's you know he's so nice. He's very professional, and he you know he um he's a. Uh, He's not like a yes man, but he's just more of like the kind of guy he'll do. He just knows his job, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. Like, okay, like he listens to everybody there. You can tell that that's why he's getting, you know, the, the push that he deserves because he's not, you know, he's not in it for himself really. He's in it for the business, you know, the company. And that's a good and that's a good mentality, of course. Oh yeah, that's a good mentality. Oh, yeah. So you, talk you know, about... it's funny when I went to TNA. That's how everybody down there was too backstage. You could tell. Mm-hmm. You know, they're all in it for the company. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, that's the good vibe you want. That's the vibe you need. Hey, I know you had touched briefly on how you came under the radar for TNA Wrestling, uh, but I want you to talk about that a little bit more if you can. What what led you to uh, go into their promotion? I know you had said your dad had got some tickets. Was it a case where you had saw one of the tryout matches was in your area? I, uh, honestly, uh one of the bookers for NECW, New England Championship Wrestling, George Carroll, he's uh, he's a really good guy around here. You know, he helps me a lot with the getting uh, bookings and stuff. Mm-hmm. He gave me Al Snow's email. I emailed him. I sent him a resume, pictures, videos, um, cover letter. Very, you know, like, like I was applying for a job. Mm-hmm. Within two weeks, he uh, got back to me and said, I want to uh, call you. For any opportunity, uh, for some opportunities to work for us, and they gave him my number, and he called me, and went from there. Mm-hmm. So it was like it all happened so quick, and there was a, that happened in August, and then uh, I'd say actually no, I, I think I got the email in July, and for the whole month of August, I didn't hear back from him, mm-hmm. and then I didn't hear back from him until like two weeks before they got checked, <laughs> and he said we're sending a camera crew up there, and they did the camera thing, videotaped it, showed it that week, so. And that was just like, you know, it was awesome. I thought it was, uh, it was, it was good because I got to learn how what it was like to travel through an airport. You know, wake up, go to the airport, get down there, check into a hotel, go to the show, get out of the show, eat, go sleep in the hotel, wake up, go to the airport. You know, I, I kind of felt how that'd be. Right, right. Experience, you know, it's the best. 
that now I'll, I'd like for you to just clear something up. There's a, a little misconception that's floating around here. We got some folks, and it could be the anti-TNA fans. They look at this yeah. whole TNA gut check concept, and they sit up and they say, oh, you know, that has just got to be some of the most – um, um, they're faking it. That 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 concept yeah. is rigged. Yeah. You got other people. They're like, you know what? This is a really cool concept. You know, they they feel truly invested into it, especially when Impact Wrestling says, you know, hey, go out there, cash your vote. Do you think this wrestler should get a contract? You know, clear up the uh, myth that's out there if you can. Is this the real deal with the TNA gut check, or is some of it a little bit? Um, Scripted? What's what's the final verdict on this? Oh, uh, you know what? I have the. Uh, it's funny in my apartment, my buddies. I have the script on the wall, and it's literally. I'll, I'll tell you exactly what my segment says, and this is not like trying to break wrestling uh, talk or anything, but gut check segment hosted by JB, and then all it says is, um, first judge casts his vote. JB gives Evan last opportunity to conv- convince the judges. Judge reveals votes. That's all it says. <laughs> Wow. That was my script. I was I got there, I was handed that. I wasn't told anything and I remember flying down there that uh day, that Thursday morning, and just saying to myself, Well, tomorrow I'm either gonna fly home a TNA superstar or a joke. And I flew home a joke. Wow. Now I wanna pick up on that. Now that the holidays have come well, the holidays are still here. I mean, we just got done with Thanksgiving, but basically now that a little bit of time has passed, and you've had Christmas a little bit time. of time. Yeah, Christmas time's around the corner. You've had a little bit of time to reflect on that ruling. I want to pick up on what you just said there. Do you feel that the judges made a mistake uh, not giving you a contract in part because maybe your age or they felt that you didn't have the experience, combination of both? What What's your take overall on their decision? Well, honestly, you know, this is what I, so, all right, this is what I think. I think they booked it knowing they were going to say no to me They because, they, you know, listen, tonight did um did uh, Wes Briscoe get the job? Did he get the gut check? Yeah, he got the gut check, yeah. Okay. I was down there and Wes Briscoe was down there when I was there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I physically had a conversation with Wes Briscoe. Wes Briscoe is on TNA every week. Like, it's no secret. You know what I mean? Exactly. Garrett Bischoff is on TNA every week. It's no secret. Joey Ryan was, was signed, and that's no secret. You know what I mean? So, like, I know for a fact that they booked me to lose. Like, they had booked. They literally booked Wes Briscoe for a reason. There's a reason why he was on gut check. There's a reason why... Um, I mean, like, then there's in-betweeners, like Taylor Hendricks and um, Silva there and um, what's the other guy, Sam Shaw. And then Christian York, you know, they knew they were going to sign him, and they were like, we're going to bring you into the gut check because that's a way for him to get over, I'm pretty sure. You know what I mean? Like, but with me, I know they, I know for a fact that they said to themselves, we're going to book this kid and we're going to say no to him. We're not going to tell him, though, obviously, like everybody else, but we're going to book him for this reason to say no. He's 18 years old, and we can, we can say no to him, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And But that's all right. I mean, that's wrestling. I got to be there, you know. I'm glad. You, I'm really, and I mean this uh, uh, with heartfelt sincerity, I'm glad that you said that. It's nice to hear you say that, and you're not in any way – you don't have any hard feelings about that. You're not bitter because I, I must admit, because I remember it very vividly, but as I was anticipating our interview for tonight, I was refreshing my memory of your match that you had with uh, Douglas Williams and everything, and I was watching the ruling. And the first thing that clicked on my mind, and I remember vividly saying it on an episode of the Impact Showdown, the night that they voted no, I say, you know what, that has got to be some BS because they had that guy, Magnus, who came into TNA Wrestling, if I'm not mistaken, at the age of 20. And then, like, about a year, maybe almost a year and a half later, he becomes uh, one of the TNA Tag Team title co-holders. I'm like, too young. I'm like, come on, don't, don't, you know, don't insult the wrestling fans like that. And that's the other thing. It's, uh, there's been guys you know, who have been young, and someone that I, I mean, I grew up watching somebody, it's kind of funny to say, but Rene Dupree, you remember him? Oh, yeah, one of my favorites. And when I, you know, when I was younger, he was, he was the tag team champion, he was, I think, 18 years old. Yeah. And, 
And, uh, you know, he was 18. Uh, Kenny Doan, Kenny Dykstra, he was 18. And those guys, you know, Teddy Hart, and, uh, you know, those guys, they got they got fired, you know, for, for drugs, you know, drugs, bad behavior. And that just puts a bad name on people who are 18, I think, you know, when they want kids who are 18 with college education and now, you know, to be smart up, you know. Right. But, you know, they said no to me. Taz, Taz said yes. Um, I, I, you know, they said yes, no, no, shut their hands. I walked through the curtain. I walked through the wrong curtain, by the way. You know, I didn't walk up the ramp, but I told myself, I was like, if they say no, I'm going to walk this way because then no one will see me. But I didn't realize that that curtain goes to the monitor room where all the wrestlers are sitting there watching the show. Oh. So, you know, I open the curtain, and everyone's just sitting there, and then, you know, they start clapping, and everyone's clapping. I don't know why. And then Dixie Carter came up to me, and she's like, oh, sorry, uh, whatever. I don't, I don't really remember what she said. And I was just like, well, thank you. Thank you for having me. It was an honor like, to be here. I liked it a lot, whatever, you know. She, you know, she's real nice, really professional. Hulk Hogan, same thing, very nice, very professional. Eric Bischoff, very nice, very professional, you know, shook my hand. And then, you know, I was like, all right, well, Taz came up to me and said, hey, kid, uh, I really wanted you to get it. I'm sorry, man, just keep pushing it. You'll be back, I'm sure. And then, you know, I was like, well, where's Al Snow and Bruce Pritchard? And it was funny, I felt like I got stabbed in the back by Al Snow because I was talking to him for so long. I felt like I was like his buddy, you know, because right. um, the week before, he was, I was, I flew down that Thursday, did the match with Doug Williams, flew home that Friday, that Saturday I had a show in Melrose for MWF, Millennium Wrestling Federation, and Al Snow was on it, mm-hmm. so he, he, you know, sat out in the crowd and watched my match, went back to the locker room, um, he went to Kowloon, the place in Boston, Chinese restaurant with everybody after the show, and I bought him a beer and everything, and, you know, the next week he said no to me, so I felt like he stabbed me in the back, but. Um, anyway, you know, I was like, so, like, where's Bruce Pritchard and uh, Al Snow? You know, they're not even going to come back here and, like, say, hey, sorry, kid. And then um, I forget what I was doing. I think I was taking off, I was taking off my gear. Mm-hmm. I got out of gear, you know, and then they were like, oh, uh, Evan, can we do an interview with you for TNA today with Velvet? Uh, no. What's the girl's name? Is it Velvet Sky? Um, uh, uh, the Redhead? Yeah. Uh, SoCal Val. SoCal Val, yeah, that's it. And um, I was like, yeah, of course, definitely. But then as soon as they said that, you know, I turn around, there's Al Snow and Bruce Pritchard. I was like, oh, jeez, here we go. <laughs> and, um, you know, they came up to me. They were like, hey, kid, uh, they were like, can you come here real quick? And I was like, yeah. And they just pulled me aside where it was real quiet, you know, out of the way. And they were like, look, we had to say no on TV because if we said yes, gave you the job, you dropped out of college, it looked bad on us. And I was like, but I was like, you guys, I was like, I could have told you this before that you could have said yes and I'll go to college. And then Bruce looked at Al, and they looked at each other, and then Bruce was like, you know what, I'll tell you what, kid, if you want to go to Louisville, I'll pay for you to go to OVW through TNA. And I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> wow. So we'll see what goes. You know, I'll go down there. We'll see. Hopefully, I mean, if I go down there, I'm, I talked to Al Snow on Friday, mm-hmm. and he told me June is the day we're shooting. We're shooting for June 1st. So I'll probably go down there by then. Hopefully I'm down there for, you know, for a little bit. Hopefully not longer than, you know, four or five months. Because I feel like after that they throw you in the back burner, you know, especially right. in developmental. And then, I mean, I don't know if they're going to offer me a contract, a developmental contract after that, or they're going to offer me to go to TV, you know, so we'll see. But either way, I mean, I'm going to go down there for a few months. If they don't offer me anything, I'll come back home and I'll have the OVW training under my belt, you know. So, right. And, right. I mean, that looks good for, you know, WWE, so. Exactly, exactly. But, I mean, TNA, I'd, I'd rather go there for now because, you know, I liked it. It was in Orlando. It was just, for an 18-year-old kid to be going there, you know, even if it's once a month, that would be, that'd be great, you know. Yeah, I, I can imagine, yeah. You know, nice sites to check out. I mean, you know, plenty of good hangout spots. Uh, one one of our uh, listeners uh, by the name of Foley Funk eighty nine he wants to know what was it like working with Douglas Williams even though it was a brief encounter you had there what was it like working with him? Uh, you know I I, uh, I knew Douglas Williams from a show he did up here and he recognized me he's like you know he said to me did, did I do a show with you once and I was like yeah actually he did he's like oh cool 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 and you know we went over the match and. Uh, Al Snow is, like, when you go to WWE, Triple H is the guy that calls all the matches there, you know? 
So when you go to TNA, that's Al Snow. Al Snow is Triple H at TNA. You know, he's the guy that runs everything there. It's not Hulk Hogan. It's Al Snow. And uh, and that, it's so weird thinking about that because, like, he, like, you know, people go to, like, guys that I, work, I uh, wrestle with, they go to WWE and they see guys like uh, like Arn Anderson and IRS and they're like, wow, these are guys that I saw growing up. And I went to TNA and I saw D'Lo Brown, Al Snow, and I was like, wow, these are guys I grew up watching, you know. Exactly, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you feel and more I, current when you, when, I would imagine you would feel more current because you grew up watching them and it's kind of like, hey, you guys. Yeah, but I feel like I make them feel old, you know, so I don't like to say that stuff. Like, I had like Kurt Angle was there, mm. Jeff Hardy, like, that's what I, I told him. Like, it's like, this is like. Like, when I went to WWE, I didn't even feel like that, because half those guys I don't really know because they're all new now. But, like, at TNA, there's all the guys I grew up watching, and I was like, geez, this is awesome, you know? Right. Wow. So, like, um, yeah, Douglas Williams, he he recognized me. He he went over the match. Al Snow, didn't, he just asked him what we were doing. He went over, he trusted him, because Douglas Williams is the OVW head trainer. And uh, I believe it's Douglas Williams, Al Snow, Eugene, and Rip Rogers, I believe. And um, so Douglas Williams, you know, Al Snow trusts him. We uh, we uh, called, and Al Snow wanted the match that way. He didn't want it any other way. He didn't want me having any offense. So, like, people like, online are like, well, oh, that kid sucks, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, I didn't have an option, you know what I mean? Like, I was told what to do. Like, in wrestling, that's what happens. <laughs> like, No, I'm sorry. I saw things completely different. I was like, wow, he is really selling those moves, you know. And then when the little bit of offense that you did show, I mean, like I said, it was enough for me to kind of go back and see what matches I was able to pull up of you on YouTube, and it matched exactly what I thought it was going to be when I saw your match with Williams. I was like, hey, this this, this guy actually knows how to wrestle. It's like, you know, he's pretty damn good. And that's what Al Snow knew. I like I'd always told Al Snow going into it. I said, listen, Al, like, there's guys like, um, for example, like that Christian York guy. Like, he uh, he can do all the wrestling moves, the Japanese stuff. But you know, he can do that stuff, and that's why they let him do that. Sam Shaw, same thing. He can do that, all those flips and stuff, and that's why they let him do that. But me, I told him, I was like, I don't. I was like, I said to him literally, I said, Al, I was like, I believe. Shawn Michaels didn't do anything. Shawn Michaels just sold and was a character, and that's all you need to do. And then that's what he said. He said, "Go." He's like, "I just want you to sell." He's like, "Don't worry about any moves. Just sell." I was like, "All right." He's like, "Make the crowd get invested in you." So I did the cheap Scott and too hardy, you know, too cool clap. Got the whole place doing it. And that was it. <laughs> in the ring, you know, everyone was saying, "Oh, ooh, everything hurt," you know, but everything Douglas Williams did to me was safe because he knew, like, he's a professional. Wow. Wow. So what have you been up to since uh, you had made that uh, TNA uh, gut check appearance? Uh, wrestling locally still, uh, going to college. I actually recently got hurt. I uh, pulled some tendons in my knee. It's feeling better, though. I can walk now, finally. And I cracked a uh, bone in my elbow, but, I mean, that doesn't. it was a big bruise on it before, but it went away now. It kind of hurts a little bit, but... Got back in the gym the past couple of weeks, so I'm. Uh, I took all the, for the next like two weeks. I didn't take any bookings. You know, I had it back out just in case because I don't want to risk anything, especially right now. But uh, my next show back is December 22nd. At, actually, I believe it's the 22nd. The 22nd is Saturday. Uh, I can check right now. I actually have a calendar in front of me. I can check for you. Uh, 22nd is a Saturday. Yes. Yeah, I got to show the 22nd in Everett for Millennium Wrestling Federation. So that'll be my first show back. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I just, uh, Chaotic Wrestling is the main show that I wrestle for up here. You know, that's the, um, you know, everyone says they want to wrestle for Chaotic Wrestling, but the truth is it's, it's all the same up here. You know, indie wrestling is indie wrestling, you know. But Chaotic Wrestling is my uh, mainstay promotion right now, and that's out of uh, Lowell, Mass., so you can catch me there. Uh, I go by the. I changed my name there, Ilya the Great. You know they wanted me to play off the whole TV thing, so they call me a scene on TV. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah, okay. more than my character. Uh, growing up, I really loved Val Venus the Godfather. You know, and uh, that's what I'm morphing my character into now. You know, more of like the Godfather like guy. Mm. Okay, I, th- I think that might work for you, man. I think I think it would. Now, do you know who you're going to be taking on? What's that? 
Do you know who you're going to be taking on at your December 22nd match? I got no clue. The last time I wrestled there, I took on Nunzio. Really? FBI Nunzio? Yeah, he came out to the FBI, the old ECW FBI team. Oh, Nunzio. That's a favorite. So underrated. Yeah, he's awesome. He was good. He, yeah, he, he is phenomenal. You know, it, it brings me to a point because I remember your bio. It said that you liked wrestlers such as Triple H, Edge, uh, my personal favorite, the late Tess Martin. I mean, who 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 didn't love I Love My Testicles? That was probably one of the That's best. That's funny you say that because I tell everybody that I wrestle with, every single person that I wrestle with that growing up, that the best. To me, there's guys that have my favorites, Chris Jericho, Eddie Guerrero, but then there's guys that stood out to me. And those three guys are Christian, Lance Storm, most importantly, Test. And to me, the, the best big man that could ever wrestle was Test. Test was a hell of a – yeah, he – The best big boot, Test. And, and yeah. you know what? It's funny because he – there is a reason why I believe they put him with Stephanie McMahon during that time because they knew that he was going to be something. And I think he, he – he was going to be something. That's why he went over. Think about it. He won the immunity battle royal. Mm-hmm. And so they definitely wanted to make him a star, but, you know, you know, drugs get the best of everybody, especially then. Yeah. You know, yeah. Poor sure. guy. You know, I feel very bad for him. Yeah. I, you know, I, it's not a day that goes by. I don't, you know, I don't think about that guy. And, you know, I miss him. I mean, he's for a big guy. You know, I see little shades of him when I look at a guy like uh, Matt Morgan. Um, or I look at another guy. Um, no one can like top him, though. Doc. You know, and it's funny because I do. I, I'm not. You know, I'm not nowhere, anywhere half half the size of him. But when I wrestle, I I love doing a big boot like him because you know I'm tall enough to do a big boot, so I can do it. You know, I just like because he's not. He was a big guy that wrestled like a little guy. You know what I mean? He was fast, mm-hmm. and you know the only big move he ever really did was the the big boot until. Until he went to ECW and did the you know the TKO and stuff that was insane. Wow, that's that's crazy. I always it's funny it's weird. I always tell people Tess and everybody always says no, nah, Tess is awful. No, I'm like, no, 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 Tess. No, no. And I, everyone says Shane McMahon versus Tess is the best match, but I, I'm gonna have to disagree. As far as say, like Tess best match for Shane or? Yeah, I don't think. I mean, that was good, but. I think Tess was at his best around 2000, 2001. And when he wrestled, uh, remember when he wrestled Edge for the Intercontinental Championship? Yeah, yeah. That's when he, I think he was at his best. I like that era, Tess, but I also like, uh, I think it might have been in the mid-2000s where him and Scott Steiner were feuding over the services of Stacey King. Yeah that, yeah, that was good, too. That was... Yeah, that was when uh, that was when his hair got short, right? Yeah, yeah, when his hair was shorter, yeah. And then eventually, I, I just remember when he came back to ECW, he was probably twice the size that he'd always been. Yeah, well, oh, he was really on fire then. And nobody, and I, I felt bad for him because you know when the fans like didn't react to him or anything. Mm-hmm, yeah. And that's yeah. a guy, you know. It's sad because there's a couple, you know, there's not a lot, but there's a few wrestlers that are forgotten about, and he's one of those guys, I feel like. He's very forgotten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, and, I mean, he went wrestling with TNA, I remember, for a little bit. Yeah, but they took a look at him, and, um, you know, that was pretty much the end of that, you know, because they could tell. Yeah. You know. Oh, hey, man, drugs get the best of us, I guess. That's it. Yeah, you know, I almost forgot, um, you know, we're doing this interview, and I got to pick your brain on this before I let you go. You know, unfortunately, the whole wrestling community, you know, we had lost one of the wrestling icons, I feel. We lost uh, Buddy Roberts, part of the fabulous Freebirds, uh, Hollywood yep. Blondes. Uh, you know, when you first heard that news, you know, uh, you, you have any fond memories of the Freebirds? See, like I said, you know, growing up, you know, like, I didn't grow up around that era, you know what I mean? But hmm. it's just, every time somebody dies in wrestling, I mean, in, in anything, it's awful. But in wrestling, it's it's not good because it's always going to become negative. It's going to it's gonna reflect negatively upon wrestling, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's never anything good out of a wrestler dying. Never. It's never been that way, mm-hmm. which is awful, I believe. Yeah. You know, and it's... It's sad. I know when wrestlers do die of old age, it's like people are surprised. You know, that's, and it's like, you know, it's like they're right. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, I've been on you know, Facebook, you know, a lot of the guys, 
that uh, a lot of the older guys that, you know, around the wrestling that I wrestle with and stuff, you know, they're all posting status about it. But I really, you know, I didn't really watch a lot of them, you know? Mm. Okay, okay. Yeah, I hear you on that one. All right. Well, hey, look, let the listeners know, before I let you go, how they can find you, you know, as far as Twitter, uh, YouTube. Uh, I don't have a Twitter, but I, uh, Facebook, look up Elia the Great Markopolis. E L I A the Great M A R K O P O U L O S. I better. Ha- I only. I don't have any likes. I have like a hundred and something likes. So I need to get at least uh, four million by the end of the night. Uh-oh, and we need uh, to that. yeah, we need to change that right now. Yeah. Yeah, four million. You're working on the Twitter, right? I I don't. I had a Twitter, but I had two Twitters. I had a personal one and a regular one. And I kept getting confused, and I deleted them, and I've just never made another one because I uh, I'm real lazy with that stuff, you know. Mm. But uh, I have an Instagram. People can follow me on Instagram, Elia the Great. Okay. So, um, but Facebook, Facebook's my big thing. Any girls out there, you know, message me. Anyone looking for a date? The ladies, you heard them. He's saying ladies, no guys, just ladies. You heard them. Hit them up. Hit That's them up. It. That's well, it. Well, Elia, look. I want to just take this time out from the bottom of my heart to thank you for this interview. I mean, you, of all the interviews that I've had, we've had several guests uh, past year, uh, definitely one of my favorite interviews. I mean, you really gave some true insights into the rest of the industry. Well, you had besides me. You had Joey Ryan, I remember you telling me. Yeah, yeah, we had Joey Ryan. You know, you, you, I, I, I hope Joey Ryan doesn't kick my butt, but, you, you, I mean, you were more insightful than Joey Ryan. I mean. Joey Ryan, I didn't get to meet Joey Ryan, but, uh. I know uh, I know a couple of people that you know, that have you know seen him at shows and stuff like that, but you know he's a West Coast guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. So you know I know I don't really know a lot of guys from you know uh, pro wrestling gorilla. I know a couple guys from Ring of Honor, you know. I said uh, there's a guy coming up there, Vinny Marsilia. He's real good. Uh, Matt Taven, he's another name up here that's real good. Um, and then you know, so I don't really know that he's. Joey Ryan, though, he's a guy that I knew, no matter what, like, that he had a job there because he's just, he's, he, he's, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he definitely knows what he's doing. Have you had the privilege of working with uh, a good buddy of ours? He stops by the show from time to time. Um, MECW champion, uh, or former MCW champion, uh, Justin Reno. Have you had the pleasure of working with him yet? What's the name? Justin Reno. No, I've actually never worked with him. That's that's one you should oh you would love to work. He was an ECW champion. He was a he was a M E um M E W yeah uh, champion yeah. No, I've never worked with him. No. Yeah, he just got done wrestling uh, with the Honky Tonk Man, and um, yeah, I, I think you two would you two and Joey Ryan that'd be one interesting stable. I think. I don't know any uh what are, what are some names from around you that I might know? Uh, so far just those two I, I that I'm aware of. Yeah, I don't really. The only promotions I ever really reached out besides the New England, I wrestled for uh, ECWA once down in Delaware, mm-hmm. and that that was really that's the furthest I've gone besides Florida for TNA, you know. Mm-hmm. So, wow. But yeah, you know, hopefully this next year I'll. Uh, I know some guys that you know that travel. Uh, you know, to go to Japan. Uh, my buddy Scott Reed's over in Japan right now, so he he's got to connect out there. So you know, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Well, I tell you now, what, Doug whenever, Williams, maybe I'll go to England. Who knows? Yeah, I was going to say, whatever happens, man, uh, like I always tell all our guests, and, you know, many guests, uh, you know, they always come on back because, you know, we try to keep it real cool and laid back over here, try to have a good time. I yep. always tell the guests, yeah, you are more than welcome to come on back, whether it is to plug an event or you just Well, I'd love to. You know, I'd love to come back. I'd love to come back with some wrestling friends, too. You know, i got a couple yeah. guys out here that have done some things. Can, you know, they can share their stories. You know, some guys that... You know, go to Ring of Honor, like I said. Uh, my buddy Biff Busick's getting a job right now. He's working at uh, Combat Zone Wrestling. They've tr- they've changed their landscape a little bit, you know, since you know, 2005, five, six, seven, those times. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so he's down there. You know, a lot of guys out here in New England, me going, trying to get the TNA now. We're all trying to get out there. Mm-hmm. Um, Sasha Banks and uh, this guy, Max Bauer, he's now uh, Axel Keegan in WWE. He's from New England. They're getting signed, so... You know, it's like a new era of New England guys trying to get out there. Like I said, Vinny Marsilia is another name, Matt Taven. You know, we're all trying to get out there. So, Okay, okay. Well, yeah, hey, on that note, we definitely got to have you come on back then on, on that note. And, oh, uh, I'd yeah. love to. 
definitely stay in contact us. And as I always say, any guest that comes on by our shows, they're a family member for life, so you're more than welcome to come on back. Sounds good to me, man. All right. Well, hey, look, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to do this interview. It means a lot. Oh, anytime, man. Anytime. Great, great Thank insight. Thank you for having me. I love it. All right. Let's do it again, all right? You got it, my man. All right. Stay in touch, and you have a good have night. Have a good one. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right, folks, that was the one and only Elia Markopoulos. Really great, insightful interview there. Really hope you guys appreciate that. You know, um, man, that you want to talk about really getting an understanding for the business right there. You know, my mind is just poof at some of the things that he had said there. Really an eye-opening experience. For those of you that were paying attention, now you kind of have an idea how TNA gut check goes now. Very nice, insightful, in-depth look right there. Uh, Mr. Elia Markopoulos, great pleasure.